Good morning. <laughs> um, yeah, what, what, what we're trying to, to achieve with this session is um, to build on the presentation or the, the, the information that um, Dr. Trussell, Larry Trussell, gave to yesterday on secondary modeling. Um, we know it's a bit of a hot topic um, and that people are looking to, to get further down that their, their load models further down their system. Can I ask um, how many of you actually do, are currently doing secondary modeling on your, on your networks? Just the one, anybody? How many of you are thinking about secondary modeling? Right, okay. Um, and and, and what, what we're going to do uh, this morning is uh, give you some feedback on not just my experience, but uh, the experience of the whole team on working with clients in starting the thought process in, in how to get into secondary modeling and to look at some of the issues and options that are available for you. So the, the, the uh, influencing factors for wanting to go to uh, secondary modeling, um, I think probably the, the primary one is, is uh, the, the desire to understand what's happening, the, the secondary side of the distribution transformer in terms of the impact of generation. Uh, but we're also uh, now getting lot, a lot more data and I think people are getting more, much more um, clever at uh, using metering data to build, to build load models and and it's starting to become uh, uh, easier to to start to ge to generate models um, but also uh, loss evaluation I know that in some states um, uh, reducing losses is, is a critical and certainly some of the clients I work with are in um, it particularly in in Asia where, where they perhaps haven't focused on efficiency of the network uh, they're now starting to want to reduce their losses a lot of it is non-technical losses uh, like theft or Failure to meter uh, meter uh, supplies correctly, but also they're looking at the, the how how they can re improve the the loss losses on their network as well. So this is the conventional process. Um, we generally build the network, we then apply the network uh, the, the load data, apply feeder demand data, and then use load allocation to uh, to calibrate the, the uh, load data that we've applied to get a, a model of, of how, how, how the load spreads across the network. And I think the feedback we generally get, and, and I think we had some feedback uh, just, just a minute ago, is that that has, be, has uh, over time been a good process and the load models and the, net, and the flows through the network are quite good representations of what's ha happening in reality. So that's obviously a positive uh, starting point but now what we want to do is to push that further down the system so this is the conventional uh, we have three primary load types that we're using except uh, with the exception of projects which you may be using for future project uh, future connections but generally the large customer distributed load and spot load and um, many of you are using the customer management module to actually uh, apply loads to that distributed load. The issue with that is that all those loads are pushed up to the primary section so that they are primary section models. And all uh, currently or, or historically all the generation outputs have been applied to the primary section mo model. So we haven't been reflecting the impact of distribution, gener uh, distribution generation be below the distribution transformer and also the impedance of the distribution transformer on, on the performance of the generation or losses. So this is the conventional options that were available to us. But now um, we, we, we've introduced uh, the customers as a, as a secondary demand model. It's been a bit of a change to what you would have seen in version 6.3, um, although customers started, uh, certainly 6.6.0 and 6.2, 6.1 and 6.2. Um, we're moving now to using customers for load, and we'll explain the rationale behind that. So this is the sort of typical model that you will have. You'll have a section, and you can have uh, any number of transformers connected to that section. I guess in the US, um, it would be one, one transformer per section and in many other customers. And then you can have a number of customers connected to that. 
And certainly in, in the early days of secondary modeling, people were looking towards having a, a, a customer a, a customer instance for every customer on the distribution transformer, which, which really, if you start to combine that also with time series and analysis, that is big data. Um, and, and what we want to do is to, to, to balance the granularity of the data with, with the processing time to make sure that you have models that will deliver your results in a timely fashion rather than have to wait days or, or, uh, to, to get results on a, on a lot, particularly on a large network. So customer modeling, there are three, three op options. You can have a load only customer, you can have a load plus generation customer, and you can have a generation only customer. And all three of those can be applied to a distribution transformer. What we're finding, um, and, and the team have had quite a number of meetings with the pr product team as well, uh, the con consultancy team, when, when we've been starting to, to work out how best to advise customers on how to build the secondary model. We think the current position, and I'm sure this will change as, as, as we start to uh, uh, be able to, to mine the data, uh, the, the, the metering data better, we're currently recommending that the, these two models are probably the best options with the current uh, ability to, to create models. So we, the first model is to have an aggregated customer load mod, uh, uh, an aggregated load for, for all the customers connected to distribution transformer, and then also to have an aggregated customer uh, generation uh, mo model uh, customer for all the generation that's connected to it. Now that could be if you have more than one generation type, for example, you may have a small wind or, or um, uh, I, I guess there are, there are other types of um, low voltage uh, connections or perhaps even at a four, on a 4 kV secondary network, you might have a, um, a biomass or, or, or something, something uh, that's non-solar non solar rooftop. So you can have more than one aggregated customer generation on, 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 a, on a distribution transformer as well. The other option, um, if you wanted to track what's happening and, and, and have visibility about all the generators that are connected to, to any distribution transformer, you could actually uh, model each generator as an instance in itself. So, but but the, the number of generators you're seeing on a transformer probably will be fairly small. Uh, perhaps in, particularly with the, the, the design of the, the US um, uh, network, uh, it's probably in some of the European networks where they have probably two or 300 customers connected to a di distribution transformer, then that, that might start to get too big data again. But certainly for you, I would suspect that you could probably go down to modeling every generator on a distribution, on a distribution transformer if you wanted to. So where we're moving from, uh, on the left hand of this, uh, this slide, is where we probably started from, is that uh, when we were looking at building section load models, uh, we were probably using transformer rating or numbers of customers connected to a, tra to a, to a section to be able to work out how to apportion the feeder load to, to each, each individual section. But progressively, as, as we started to become more sophisticated, um, we, we have used meter usage data and the CMM process uses that data um, and, and also some people will allocate just based on kilowatt hours consumed as well to keep it to keep it simple as simple now we're moving much more into um, perhaps using interval metered data and, and, and that that's where we have to combine uh, to, to, to be careful about the the amount of data that you're, you're applying to a model uh, because if, if you have too many customers, then, then, the amount of, then the amount of processing time increases quite significantly. So applying metered usage data, um, the, 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 the principle is that what we're looking is to aggregate up. So depending on whether you're using CMM in the current process to aggregate up your load, you can use that and then apply it to a cus customer instance, on, a, on an aggregated customer instance on your on your model, or if you're uh, using kilowatt hours, you can aggregate the kilowatt hours up, or if you're using AMI, you can, t you can look at any particular time instance and aggregate all the customer demands for that time instance up 
to uh, populate the meter. So therefore, you're, you're using everything that's uh, linked. So you're using common IDs for the distribution transformer um, and, and customers connected to that distribution transformer across both the metering database and also the GIS database. So there are a number of metering config configurations. Um, the simpler ones, uh, load traditionally has been metered by one meter and you have one kilowatt hour value. If you have a separate generator, uh, you should have the kilowatt hour consumption hopefully for, for that generator. It becomes more complicated when you have a combined load and generator and we've, we've seen um, had some conversations about at a feeder level how you look at the impact of generation on a net load You have exactly the same issue down at the metering level So how, how many people have only net metering data and no generation data from their customers? Okay So probably a small how many people get um, generator output as well as uh, the net metering Okay, so some more of you. And does anybody get load metered and generation metered separately? Yeah, you get one for each, do you? So that's, so, so, and a net meter value, or is that just calculated from the readings? Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and, and so the one's measuring the load? And, and so, so, it's, so you're not getting a net value, but you can calculate that from, from the two readings. Okay. So, so it looks as though all three of those options are present in, in, the, in the group that we have here. Um, there may, may be other combinations. Have I missed any combinations that uh, perhaps uh, we should be thinking about? Nope, good. So hopefully, hopefully what we've, we were talking about will be of use then. So introducing, um, if you have load output in data, then you, that, that is fairly straightforward that you're uh, in parallel to populating the load data into your section, section loads and customers. Uh, you can then incorporate the customer generation load as well. And you can do that as an individual, uh, an individual instance or an aggregated value. So if you have uh, three or four uh, solar PV units uh, on the same transformer, you can aggregate that up into an aggregated customer generator. So if we have both load and generation data, um, this slide here is trying to demonstrate that you might have um, ki kilowatt demand or kilowatt hour demand, that should say, um, or it could be kilowatt or kilowatt hour. You, you will have that for, for each customer. And then you will also have a value from the metering system for each generator on there. So therefore, the, the aggregation of both customer demand and, and generator demand is quite straightforward. Um, you're just, just using the data that you have and combining it for each, each distribution transformer. But when you start to get into net metering with generation data, this is the raw data that you will have. And there are some gaps there that need to be filled. And what we want to achieve is if we're using aggregated customers, we can just use the aggregated net demand and the aggregated generation demand to then combine to create the aggregated customer load. So that, that, that's, that's hopefully something that, that, that can be easily achieved through uh, data, data, data uh, analytics. So the aggregated customer load is net demand plus generation. But I guess the elephant in the room is uh, when you have no load data and no generation output data. So you're just, you just have net metering. And, and we, we, we've, we've, uh, the development product team have, have been working for some considerable time on trying to look at the options around that. And I think we're coming towards a quite a, a good solution now. It's certainly not uh, uh, a, com a completed project, but, but, it, but, but I think we certainly have serviceable um, options to, to, to get rid of that elephant. 
So peak demand, net metering only. Um, what we're trying to achieve here is to uh, estimate the output for the generator uh, and the generators that are connected. So you, you will probably have good records of where the generators are connected, what their, their, their rated kilowatt out output is. You may even have uh, the inverter ratings as well, so, so that you can apply those to, to start to look at what the output is. And so therefore, what we're then trying to do is to use weather data and other, other uh, you may have, uh, for, for non-weather based generation, you may have, have some out, output profiles you would expect them to operate within. So you can start to apply those to estimate uh, the, the generation output based on that model data. So again, the aggregated customer load is net demand plus generation, but we've calculated the, uh, the generation output by modeling each individual transformer, each individual generator, and then aggregating that up to a distribution transformer level, which then allows us to complete the calculation of the aggregated customer load. So things we have to think about is, um, well, what, what weather set points are we going to be using? Um, generally, most of you will have access to some local weather data. You'll, you'll know if you're from uh, California or, or, or Florida that you, you'll probably have a, uh, an irradiation value of around about 1,000 to 1,200 kilowatt hours, uh, kilowatts per meter squared at the height of the summer. Um, and if you're up in this part of the area, it's probably down into the five to 700 kilowatt hours, perhaps a little bit more than that, kilowatts uh, per meter squared. So you can start to predict. And we've got a, a, number, a number of tools available for you. Uh, you have the ability to apply weather set points. So if you know when your system peak is or when your generation peak output is, you can, you can pr apply the, the weather set points. So the wind speeds, the irradiation values, using the weather and analysis options editor in, in, the, in the model ribbon tab, ribbon bar. We'll, we'll have a look at these at, at the, end of the end of the slides. Um, and also, we, uh, I think uh, Larry showed you uh, yesterday that we have the ability to generate uh, it, solar irradiation profiles. Those solar irradiation profiles are, use um, well-known well algorithms that have been developed by research on his, historical weather data and it will, it will use the longitude and latitude of the location that you're using to then calculate for you a monthly weather uh, a, a solar irradiation curve for uh, each day day of that month so uh, that that can then be used to drive the outputs of, your, of each individual generator So to generate those algorithms, the first thing you need to do is enter the coordinates for, for, that, for the location. Uh, that can be, you can have individual weather zones uh, across, a, if you have a large geographic area, or you can just use one longitude and latitude if you have a, a smaller area that concern you're, you're using. I guess perhaps even the substation uh, longitude and latitude could be driven for each, you could have a, a, a weather zone for each substation or or operational area that you have, you have the flexibility to develop that as, as, as the, the, how, however it fits your your uh, particular network and your your model a geographic area. Then once you set that, you then click on. There's a little graph button at the top of the uh, to the right of the months, and that will automatically generate from that longitude and latitude uh, a weather profile, uh, an irradiation profile. Sorry. So if you were, uh, you, you're one of the uh, less, less uh, data rich organizations with just net metering. So how, what, what would be the process you would have to adopt to uh, be able to take that, that model data and then turn that into your low profile, your aggre for uh, aggregated customers? The first thing you would need to do is to create a demand database or spreadsheet for DTRANS with aggregated net demands. Uh, run that uh, low flow to calculate generation outputs using weather-based output. 
export the generation output to, to a data set and then calculate the loads adding the generation outputs to the DTransNet demands. Sounds very straightforward, but there's a lot of data associated with that. Um, so obviously uh, it will require probably some sort of either uh, Visual Basic or, 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 or SQL scripts to, to do that combination for you. And then once you've completed that, you would then use um, the data lake to import, import the updated data, uh, distribution transformer demands to a, gen, to a customer now. Um, so, so there are some options in that we'll show you in a, in a minute to get that data in, in a data lake. So the customer worksheet um, is exportable, as is the DTRANS worksheet. You can see the open in, in Excel. Uh, at the left hand corner there so you can certainly ex export it to a, a spreadsheet and then import that spreadsheet into a database if you wanted to to work with a database I guess I, I'm not sure we if we can do put it straight into a database can we Larry at the moment if we're dealing with a lot of data no no I, I couldn't find another suitable location so it's something perhaps to think think for for a future option So that's the basic um, presentation. Um, what I'm going to do now is just to show you how that actually works within Synergy a little bit more, so that so you're a bit more familiar with it. So what do I do here? Do I just go to Synergy? Yeah. Right. So so what I'm going to do is just um, select one of the feeders here. Uh, the new brick spring will be good as anything. So the first thing we need to do if we're into secondary modeling is uh, go to the model analysis and we need to change the uh, secondary modeling option to transformers and customers. So if you've selected uh, do not model secondary, Synergy will automatically uh, uh, look for loads at this section level and it will aggregate up uh, the DTRANS as a pr to a primary load. So, uh, the, and uh, as we mentioned earlier, there are ways that uh, some some applications will push load up from a distribution transformer, and other other others will push it down to, to the customer level. But um, so, so so that we to do secondary modeling, we would need to have that transformers and customers selected. The other thing we would need to make sure is that we have the right uh, settings that we want to do to, to use if we're using weather-based irradiation profiles or wind wind profiles we would need to make sure that was checked and also that any of the generators uh, options have not been excluded so that you will, will, will apply all, all of your generation options the other setting we need to worry about is in time and weather is to uh, make sure that we have either, depending on, on what, what, what you're doing, you're, you're working with a specified time, uh, or if you want peak load, minimum load. I think um, the, the view is that the, the do not adjust for time of day will become almost a redundant option because people will either select peak load or, or a specified time or, or work with minimum, depending on what type of study they're doing. Obviously, choose uh, if you if you're working in in, in months, then uh, choose the, the monthly option, and and then you you can select the relevant months that you want to work work with. And then also choose whether you want to work with weather set points or weather profiles time of day. So I'll keep those changes and now we're moving more into the model and what I'm going to do is um, build a secondary model profile so the first thing we need to do obviously if you're building uh, large system models you'll be doing this um, with scripting and building your models but if you're doing it manually the first thing you would need to do is add your distribution transformer um, you would select the type of transformer and I'm going to choose a 500 kVA um, 480 transformer, three phase unit, and uh, just for completeness, I'm going to apply it as a 
uh, the K connected KVA as a, as a transformer rating. You may you may uh, choose to do that um, as a proportion of the transformer rating based on how much how much loading you have connected to it. Um, then, having completed that, the plot apply, and now we need to add the customers. So the first type of customer I'm going to add. is a load only customer and I'm going to assume it's a three phase customer and they have four kilowatts uh, per phase at a power factor of 95% and it is one customer so that that would be an individual customer there um, the other option uh, and I think we, this is the one that we would recommend is that you have perhaps Uh, 95 um, for a connected customer you might have um, if you're in in the UK it might be 125 customers for 250 kVA um, so that's not not typical of the UK of, of, of the US um, but it certainly is typical of some systems I guess yours is going to be somewhere between one and a dozen perhaps um, perhaps occasionally uh, you may have a main that might supply 20 or 30 customers yeah um, so that would be the aggregated customer, a load customer that we can apply. So I just apply that and then I'll add another customer. And th this would be a, an aggregated generation, cust uh, generation, sorry, not a, this is a specific customer that perhaps has a larger generator connected but also has a significant load that you want to model separately so you could apply um, so let's say perhaps a 20 20 kilowatt kVA load and it would be one customer and the generation then would be perhaps uh, a 15 kilowatt solar panel or, or if it may be something slightly larger than that, that you would want to model um, you can also model the batteries as we mentioned before. Um, so that this is selected as residential solar. Um, it's the only generator I've got set up at the moment, but, we, but we, you, you, it could be um, a, a, a car park solar on a, on a shopping, shopping precinct or something like that. Uh, unfortunately, the batteries, uh, I'm using the current pre-release version of 6.4. And, and this, I assume, will be resolved by the product team before before the release. Um, and this is the battery uh, that that shouldn't be greyed out if you select a battery on. Um, and I'm sure it will will come. And then you can select the battery um, and apply. Now, what you the, you would need to make sure is that for both of those types of generator, that you have a generation type in the warehouse. So if we said we wanted a um, secondary battery, let's use the caps, um, then we would obviously choose that. And the thing we need to make sure is that we've selected it as a secondary distribution generation. So any, any generation that you want to apply to the secondary has to be selected as a section distribution gen generation, which is the, the setting that we've used when you're applying a generator as a section. It's also now used for sections that are connected, uh, generators that are connected to the secondary side of the set, uh, distribution transformer. And, and as I say, when, when the products will, will, will allow you to select that battery uh, going forward. Uh, the third type of customer that I wanted to add was a generation only customer. And here you you would need to say if you want if it's if it was a connected customer, I, I suspect you wouldn't want to populate that um, if, if it was because that would influence any load allocation that you're doing for so probably presumably would use use connected customer zero 
Uh, I may be wrong with that, but I'm fairly confident that's the case. But if you if you want to clarify it, please do contact us after the after the uh, the, the seminar. So we're going to switch the generator on, and we're going to apply, let's say, um, 100, uh, 100 kilowatt generator. So this is this is your perhaps your mall, mall top, so it's a solar PV or a, a wind generator, perhaps on a farm. Um, and you can apply that. But if I now um, now switch off any generation that's already connected to the and carry out a load flow. We should be able to see um, here in that. now that again this is work in progress but these are the sorts of reports you will get is that you will see that the section that I've just selected is this section here and you're starting to see results for that. Unfortunately the results aren't carrying through to the, to, to, to the table just yet but they will do um, when, when 6.4 is released I'm sure. Um, you have a, so you have a secondary details, secondary loads which should, which will get some the the kilowatt and kvar and losses values, and then a DTRAN value for each DTRAN that's connected to there. So, so you you should have a fairly comprehensive set of results, and you can start to look at both loading and voltage conditions on the secondary side. There was some slides that I didn't cover actually. So, um, the other thing. Um, Obviously, with there we go. Um, th this this shows the impact of the generation on on the demand. Um, we we we've only got a small amount of generation as as we set up. It's uh, operating at sixty seven ish kilowatts at the moment, but that shows that 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 those results are coming through when you do a time series analysis as well. So this this is a distribution transformer. Okay. Uh, sorry, I, I think I think this is a, the transformer. It depends on how you set set up the icons, uh, but you can um, add. I'm sure Larry will tell me there's a quicker way of doing this. Um, so at the moment we've got uh, PV and DTrans set on, but you could also add dis uh, dis distributed load. So th those are the different icons that you can have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's the the section itself. Yeah, because this is the slide that I was hoping to show you. So, um, just bear with me. So it's the dis dis trans. Where are we? Yeah. So we want to have a look at this service layout. Is that the one? Yeah, so, so if you have a, a particular main, perhaps a 2 AAC or a 1 AAC, 1 naught, um, you can apply the length of it. Yeah. So, and, and I think this is designed, I mean, obviously, if you have a simple transformer with um, a, one, one, one main uh, and one customer connected, it's quite a simple model that you can put in. Uh, but, but we haven't got a complex secondary model yet. We, what, we, what we're looking for is simple equivalent models. So we, if you look at your, your low voltage connections, if, if there is a main that feeds three or four customers, then perhaps um, you, can, you can apply the length for that. Or if you have several mains, that, uh, you, you can apply an average length of the two mains and then obviously average service length across all the customers that you have. So, so we're, not, we're not applying a, a, a precise model for every customer. Uh, we're just looking for a, an equivalent model that will give you reasonable uh, ideas as to how the voltage and the, the, the flows, uh, well, the, not, not so much the flows, but the voltage and, and uh, is on the LV side. 
Uh, it's okay, no, no, I'm, I'm okay. I, I, th I, th I think we've covered it. Yeah. So, so, is there any more questions uh, before we finish? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. If 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 you if you're using aggregated, yes, because I um, mean, obviously that 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 um that that riser that goes up the 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 apartment building, um, you you will have, I guess, um, let's say ten ten apartments on each floor. So so if if it's a fifty meter uh, riser, uh, the average height of of, of the Perhaps is, is, is 25 meters, um, and then you can apply all all the aggregated load for for all those customers at the end of that main. Yeah, that, that's 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 the way I would recommend at the moment. Um, <laughs> any more questions? I, 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 I think it. I, I think it depends on how complex that that secondary is. So if you have a a single long secondary that feeds uh, just a, a few a few customers at the at the end or or, or, or along along the route, then you, you you I think you could e you easily use the current uh, the the secondary model for the LV system. If you have perhaps a more complex one where you've got a few spurs um, and, and you really want to understand what the flows are like on that, then, then I think it, it, it sort of pushes you towards having a more detailed model. Um, is there anything you want to add to that, Larry? I, I, I think I think with secondary um, uh, at, at, at the secondary level, it, um, the, 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 the the sort of mod load modelling that we've done at MV I think has been proved to be quite quite good and, and representative. I think it's it, because of the granularity and the unpredictability of the usage by individual customers. I think it, it becomes a lot more difficult to to to, to ensure that you have an a, an accurate representation of what's actually happening at any one time. So you should see a lot more variation, uh, even on a day-to-day -day on a secondary, compared to what 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 you would see on a, a, at the MV level. Okay. Any more questions? All right. So we're done. So uh, on to Kyle, I think. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.